I want to offer a very short lecture on a subject called positivism. Uh, it's an ism, a late 19th century ideology that is important because it is sort of the underlying ideology of the scientificos uh, who provide the underlying ideology for the Porfiriato, uh, actually. In a very broad sense, a definition of po positivism might be a theory <clears throat> that theology and metaphysics uh, are uh, historically earlier and imperfect modes of knowledge, and that positive knowledge, true knowledge, is based on natural phenomena and their properties and relations as verified by the empirical sciences. Uh, it's an affirmation in rational thinking. Uh, and as I said, it became in some ways the scientific, I'm putting air quotes around, around scientific, justification for authoritarian politics in Latin America, especially in Porfirian Mexico. Now before we get to Mexico, let's talk about the origins of positivism, uh, which uh, reside with Auguste Comte, a Frenchman, lived in the first half of the uh, 19th century, and he, he um, just as Adam Smith uh, essentially invented economics, uh, Freud, uh, psychology, uh, uh, Comte is, is generally considered the father of sociology. He's sort of the inventor of the sociological field and is in some ways greatly respected. But he was also intermittently uh, insane uh, and is also sort of uh, made fun of, it's kind of respected but also mocked, not unlike uh, sociology. Um, now, he was focused on modernity. He was living in a world that revered human reason, uh, reason. Uh, and there, there's a relation here to atheism, uh, this idea that now that um, uh, enlightenment is here, uh, what, what we know is based on the matter and energy present in the universe. There is nothing beyond that, nothing transcendent. And so we, we look at what we know is energy and matter and what we rationalize in our mind about that. That's all we can know. And he called this positivism. And he first espoused in a series of writings between 1830 and 1842. Now, um, Comte proposed sort of three stages of historical development. He said society, you know, mankind lives in three stages. This idea of putting it in stages, not unlike Marxism, uh, that's not surprising. Uh, he and Marx were contemporaries, uh, and they both looked to Henri de Saint-Simon, who was a utopian socialist thinker who influenced both Marx and Comte. He was also Comte's mentor. Um, anyway, so we had these three stages. Stage one was the theological stage, which is based on a wholehearted belief in all things with reference to God and deals with humankind's accepting of church doctrine rather than relying on its rational powers to explore the basic questions of existence. Stage two is the metaphysical stage. Metaphysics, by the way, is that part of philosophy that is concerned with the basic cause and nature of things. Um, this is not necessarily appropriate, but it might help you see it. It's sort of uh, thinking spiritually about the world, but not necessarily religiously. Uh, this phase um, is, is, in, is the phase in which the universal rights of humanity are very important. This is the rights of man idea, that humanity is invested with certain inalienable rights that must be respected. Um, this, is what, this is what drove the French Revolution. Metaphysical thinking, however, disregards belief in a concrete God. The third stage is known as the positivity stage, or the positive stage, also known as the scientific st stage. And it refers to scientific explanation based on observation, experiment, and comparison. Uh, positive explanations rely upon the scientific method for their justification. During this stage, humans try to establish cause and effect relationships. Positivism is a purely intellectual way of looking at the world. As well, it emphasizes ob uh, observation and classification of data and facts. Uh, and this is uh, sort of the basis of positivism as Comte uh, espoused it. Now, a tangent here. Uh, later in his life, Comte invented a religion of humanity. He said that now we don't need religion anymore. Um, we've done away with religion and God, we still need the trappings of religion, uh, the communal aspect, the ritual aspect. And I think he was probably right. And so he invented a whole elaborate religion uh, called the Religion of Humanity, laid it out in two volumes, uh, Summary Exposition of the Universal Religion 
and theory of the future of man. He even proposed um, a scheme called for a plan for an enormous new priesthood, which would employ 100,000 people uh, in France alone, uh, sort of, you know, part philosopher, part writer, part psychotherapist. I think it'd be a really cool job. But anyway, uh, he was laughed at for this idea, and this is one reason he's sort of looked at askance now. All right, at some point, uh, Auguste Comte's ideas of positivism somehow got conflated with uh, social Darwinism. You'll recall Herbert Spencer was the premier social Darwinist uh, of Britain, and he, he was a student of Comte, and he, he sort of put the two together. Um, difficult to say how. I, I guess, um, you know, according to social Darwinists uh, and, and the rising tide of racism in the 19th century, racism had a certain scientific logic to it. And so he sort of conflated positivism, positivism with social Darwinism and racism, uh, and this got translated into uh, uh, an ideology for how you uh, build a country, and that got applied to Latin America. All right, so uh, a Mexican positivism uh, emerged, uh, and that was the leading ideology of the Cientificos, the scientist, uh, literal word in Spanish, or really those scientifically oriented. Um, and this Mexican positivism was part positivism, part scientific management, part um, social Darwinism, and part just naked, unfettered capitalism. Uh, and it was largely uh, a group of technocrats, and by technocrats I mean technical experts like engineers, bankers, and economists who were in government for their technical expertise, as opposed to political reasons. Uh, they were members of a group, a coherent group, who advanced Mexican progress. They believed in the following, uh, order and progress fused together. They demanded a direct control by an elite in a state geared toward progress. Demonstra demonstrable empirical science would determine truth and develop laws. This was considered a cure for disorder, particularly the disorder uh, prior to, uh, of Mexico prior to the Porfiriato. There was an emphasis on education, but really only elite education, and this was inherently racist, i.e., um, the biggest problem Mexico had was the fact that the vast majority of its population were part Indian, uh, and they were racially inferior to the kind of economic progress that we wanted. The Cientificos, by the way, they're, they're not just a, a theory. They were an actual definable group of people who considered themselves Cientificos, um, we've already mentioned Limantour, uh, Jose Yves Limantour, who was the Secretary of the Treasury from 1893 until 1911 with the fall of Diaz. He was considered sort of the political leader of the faction of Cientificos. Enrique Creel, uh, uh, 1854 to 1931, he was a wealthy businessman and landowner. He was an influential member of the powerful Creel Dash Terrazas family that I've mentioned that dominated the northern state of Chihuahua. Huge uh, landholders, millions of acres. Uh, and he was the governor of Chihuahua uh, from 1904 until the fall of the Diaz regime in 1911. And finally, uh, Luis Terrazas, uh, 1829 to 1923. He was the founder of the, was the patriarch of the Creel Terrazas family. He was the father-in-law of Enrique Creel and one of the richest landowners in the Republic of Mexico. He helped bankroll the, the Cientifico faction. And so, in conclusion, um, positivism as the ideology of the Cientificos what was important. It played a significant role in the revolution because if we go to our analytical formula of uh, the revolution is caused by old inequalities plus new economic pressures, uh, old inequalities equal the racism uh, and the racial classes, social classes inherent in old Mexico, uh, and certainly uh, positivism gave that sort of a, a scientific veneer. And then we discussed the new economic pressures, uh, growth, which positivism was incredibly pro-growth, and it was dependent on foreign investment, which exacerbated uh, threats to Mexican sovereignty, and it exacerbated uh, stratification of wealth, which of course uh, was the principal economic pressure that exploded the old inequalities resulting in the revolution.